Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, September 13th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Again, this video will mostly focus on newly formed Tropical Depression 9, but looking across the rest of the basin, areas that could be watchable over the next several days include uh, some of the tropical waves in the central Atlantic, which over the next six days or so will potentially be approaching the Lesser Antilles. This area of the monsoon trough in the eastern Atlantic has been rather complex of late, with small-scale features multiple features dancing around with tropical waves and this has been difficult for uh, models to figure out good news is we still have several days to watch this area as it slowly meanders toward the west but we may have a storm out of this whole region at some point for now no imminent threat and nothing uh, super organized today and we've got several days to watch that we also have the upper low in the Gulf of Mexico to the west of TD9 which is slowly backing westward and right now there's not a lot going on with it but you can see some thunderstorm activity activity on the eastern side and there's a slim chance that over the next three days or so this thunderstorm activity will erode the upper low enough uh, that it will weaken allowing a surface circulation that's warm cord in nature to form as this whole mess moves west toward the Texas Mexico border and we might have a weak uh, low try to spin up off the coast of Texas prior to moving inland, probably bringing some enhanced rainfall to this area. Right now, chances, as I said, are pretty slim for an actual tropical development here, but it'll be something to keep a wary eye on during the next few days just in case. Likely just enhanced rain chances, though. And here's newly formed Tropical Depression 9. Here's the Bahamas outlined in black, and you can see the area of the thunderstorm activity off to the east. Still a pretty broad system, but we do have a better organized low-level circulation today. No longer an open trough, but a broad low centered somewhere in here, with most of the convection still being pushed off onto the northeast side. You can see some of these upper-level cirrus clouds coming out of the southwest over the Bahamas, again making this primarily a northeast weighted uh, system. We can see the recon data as the plane is just now flying in there showing the center of circulation now at 1,008 millibars. This is a little bit of a pressure fall from earlier in the day indicating the continuing organization but winds remain weak with maximum winds on the east side about 30, 35 miles an hour so this is not uh, a tropical storm right now just a tropical depression and winds are comparatively weak. Uh, and this is uh, mostly a rain threat for the Bahamas here. Some of the good news uh, is that as the system moves, generally in the direction of Great Abaco, uh, again with the wind shear, most of the heaviest weather may remain kind of on the right-hand side of the track and mostly offshore of these islands. That's the hope anyway, so that the recovery efforts there can have dry weather. Uh, but enhanced rainfall may occur here uh, regardless over the next day or two, and that's the primary impact here. If anything, uh, this could be a tropical storm by that time, getting a mild increase in winds, but right now we're not seeing a lot of organization that would favor rapid development, and given the continued moderate shear here, things will likely remain that way at least for the next little while with only gradual organization during the next couple of days. Here's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, has come east as uh, the models that have picked up on this now, including the GFS, which now finally shows development as we kind of expected would happen, are now picking up on a little bit of a more eastward track. What kind of happened earlier today was this uh, low-level center was closer to Cat Island earlier in the day, but kind of reformed a little bit closer to the mid-level center. And so we have a little bit of a northeastward shift in the position of the system. And this has helped shift the track a little bit more to the right here as it comes up up east of Florida and again that's the uncertainty that comes with systems that haven't formed yet sometimes they form in a spot uh, that's a little different than the models uh, expect at first and now that we kind of know where this is uh, we have this more eastward track here offshore Florida and then turning out toward the east while strengthening into a hurricane after we get beyond the weekend. And so right now, as far as short-term impacts, again, tropical storm warnings for the northern Bahamas, maybe some gusty winds there to 40 miles per hour or so, primarily a rain threat though. Tropical storm watch still up for portions of the east coast of Florida, but trends have been good today in keeping this offshore. And given that there will still be some wind shear coming out of the southwest direction that you can see here from the upper low in the Gulf of Mexico, it may be that this side of the storm if we, have a, if we have the storm centered here, this side of the storm might be uh, pretty dry, all things considered. So that's the, the hope right now is that we won't get much in Florida, and it's not uh, looking like it's going to be much of a big deal unless we have an unexpected shift toward the left in the forecast. As far as the longer term here, this track out to day five, how reliable is this? Well, let's take a look at the European steering pattern again. Now that we have a better idea of where the system is going in the short term, this is day three out to Monday morning, showing what would be Humberto here. That's what it would be 
That's what it will be named if it acquires tropical storm force winds. And again, what we have is this trough uh, exiting New England to the east, and we have this ridge building over the central part of the country, and this is going to be translating eastward over time. Now, the fact that the storm uh, reformed slightly to the northeast today means that it's it's getting to this position pretty quick and then getting steered toward the northeast by this southwesterly flow on the right hand or on the left hand side of this ridge uh, to its east. And this ridge here is not quite fast enough in getting to the north of the storm to block its progress northeastward as this ridge steers it out. So on these model runs of late, this ridge is just too slow. It's, it's coming east, but not fast enough to catch Humberto and block it back into an area where it can cause problems. Instead, it sort of just follows the steering flow on out to the northeast. Now, one thing we do have to be concerned about potentially is Bermuda, which is a small target but it may be that the direction the system takes puts them in the threat area. So we're going to be keeping an eye on this for them. Uh, could it still get caught under this ridge? Well, if it happens to be much slower, say farther back here, slower to take that turn northeast, then we might be talking about a, a situation where it really slows down in here and meanders for a while and could potentially be a problem if it starts meandering in the wrong direction as this ridge comes to its north. But right now, today, indications have shifted mostly toward this escaping away from North America and being a threat only to Bermuda. We haven't quite closed the door on potentially getting this trapped and meandering, uh, but the odds of that have decreased a little bit today. We'll keep an eye on it over the next several days days just in case. And here's the GFS just showing that this model has finally caught on to the correct evolution here. It no longer has a dying tropical wave in the Gulf of Mexico, but instead has a developing storm that turns east just like all the other models do now as well. So that's TD9. Again, gradual organization here northeast of the Bahamas, moving close to Great Abaco, bringing enhanced rainfall largely to the northern Bahamas, maybe some enhanced rainfall in eastern Florida as well, and then expected to turn east of the U.S. and then take a turn out into the western Atlantic, where strengthening will likely occur, and we could see a decent-looking hurricane in here. That might be something that moves in the vicinity of Bermuda in four to five days. We'll keep an eye on that. Still a chance that it gets stuck here in the steering pattern we just talked about. Uh, and we'll keep an eye out for that, but odds have decreased and a track away from the U.S. is currently the most likely scenario. And again, we have disturbances in the central Atlantic that will be propagating westward, potentially approaching the Lesser Antilles in several days. Lots of time to watch these and no imminent threats at this moment. And then finally, again, the upper low in the Gulf of Mexico backing westward might have a chance at working its way to the surface near the coast of Texas and northern Mexico in about three or four days. Uh, only slim chances of that actually developing, likely just enhanced rain chances chances in this region as we head beyond the weekend. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.